somebody. Help. A sudden scream echoed. Looking over, I saw a woman being harassed by a stranger. It turned out that this woman had an unexpected connection with me. My name is Jason. I am an ordinary company employee. I had a wife. Her name was Emily. She was my classmate in high school. In our first year of high school, we were in the same class and our seats were close, so we quickly became friends. I was raised by a single parent and I found out she was too, which brought us even closer. We had a lot in common due to our similar upbringing. We hit it off right away. Gradually, I was drawn to Emily, and before I knew it, I had fallen for her. One day after school, in an empty classroom, I asked her out. I was anxious that she might see me only as a friend, but when I bravely told her I liked her, Emily said, I like you too, Jason. After that, we officially started dating. We both had our struggles as children and didn't have many good memories. So we didn't talk about the past more than necessary, but we felt connected. Emily was a very kind person. When I was disappointed that my mock exam scores weren't improving during our college entrance exam preparation, she encouraged me by saying, mock exams are just practice tests, so don't worry too much. As long as you don't make the same mistakes next time, you'll be fine. Despite having her own exams to worry about, she always took the time to care for me, which made me very happy. I managed to get into my first choice university, thanks to Emily. We continued our relationship while in university. Both of us had student loans, and we were anxious about whether we could earn enough to repay them in the future. We also had difficult courses to pass. But we supported each other and graduated successfully. We got married in our third year after joining the company. Though we didn't have children, our relationship remained as strong as ever, and we enjoyed many happy days together. After getting married, Emily quickly became a great cook, and she would make me homemade meals for dinner. Talking with Emily about our day while enjoying the dinner together was a delightful time. On weekends, we would always go cycling together. Emily who liked to exercise, introduced me to cycling, and it turned out to be fun. Riding a bike and exploring unknown places was exciting. If we found a nice-looking restaurant or diner along the way, we would eat there. If we came across interesting stores, we would go in and shop there. Sometimes we got lost, arguing over which way to go and checking the map on the phone. Looking back, those moments became good memories. I hoped peaceful days like this would last forever. We sometimes envisioned ourselves when we became older, telling each other, even as we grow older, I want us to live happily together. Sometimes fate is merciless. One day, a tragedy occurred. It happened five years ago, on our wedding anniversary. That day, Emily told me she would be late because she was buying a celebration cake. I was waiting for her at home when I received a phone call from an unknown number. With suspicion, I answered the call and was informed, your wife was involved in a traffic accident and was taken to the hospital, but she has passed away. I couldn't believe it at first. She had been perfectly fine before leaving for work that morning. I wished it was a bad joke. But Emily's death was not a joke, it was a harsh reality. I rushed to the hospital, where they explained the details to me. Emily was crossing the street when a car, running a red light, hit her. I saw Emily's body. She looked peaceful, as if she were just sleeping. Emily, Emily, please wake up. Hoping she might wake up, I called out to her, but Emily didn't move an inch. Her face, when I gently touched it, was shockingly cold. It was a harsh reality that she was no longer alive. This can't be true. The reality of Emily's death hit me all at once, and I collapsed on the spot. Afterward, I couldn't stop the tears. The loss of my beloved wife was too much to bear. I thought time would heal the wound, but no matter how much time had passed, 
I remained listless. Emily was no longer there to cut for me. I started eating takeaways all the time. I had no energy or motivation to cook for myself. Eating dinner alone at home was very depressing. The bicycle that we used to ride together on cycling trips now only reminded me of Emily, so I stored it away in the back of the garage. I spent my days aimlessly, losing the will to live. I managed to go to work every day, but I was apathetic even there. I would only do the bare minimum at work and then go straight home. It seemed my colleagues noticed that something was off with me, having lost my wife, and there were times when they expressed concern by asking, are you okay? They tried to cheer me up and invited me out for drinks, but I couldn't bring myself to go and kept declining. Deep down, I knew this couldn't go on, but nothing seemed to help. I tried starting new hobbies to change my mood, but none of them lasted. Even when I went out, being alone made it unenjoyable, and my mood remained gloomy. Ultimately, I continued to be in a state of depression. Then one day, the turning point came. A woman named Jane joined our workplace as a mid-career employee. When I saw her, I couldn't believe my eyes. She looked exactly like Emily. For a moment, I thought Emily had come back to life. By some twist of fate, Jane was assigned to the desk next to mine. Nice to meet you, she said, greeting me politely. Nice to meet you too, I replied awkwardly. Furthermore, I was assigned to be Jane's mentor. Naturally, our interactions increased, but for a while, I was awkward, seeing Emily in her. Jane even asked, is something wrong? Did I do anything to upset you, Jason? It's nothing. Sorry, sorry, I replied, brushing it off. I wanted to talk to her about Emily. However, bringing up such a heavy topic like the striking resemblance between Jane and my deceased wife seemed inappropriate, so I stuck to safe, work-related conversations. But Emily's image kept haunting me, especially when I was with Jane, teaching her various work tasks. I couldn't help noticing the similarities between her and Emily. For example, blinking twice when surprised. Also, tilting her head to the right side when thinking. These small gestures were uncannily similar. Jane seemed to notice my lack of energy and kindly offered support. Are you okay? If you're not feeling well, I can do the rest of the work. You can leave early if you need to, she said. Her way of simply caring without criticizing or prying was comforting. This aspect of her was exactly like that of Emily. It wasn't merely a resemblance. It felt like more than that. I became increasingly curious about her relation to Emily, feeling a strong desire to ask Jane about it. However, given the nature of the topic, I couldn't find the right moment to bring it up, and time just slipped away. Then, about a month after Jane joined our company, our department decided to hold a welcome party for her, doubling as a social gathering. As Jane's mentor, I was in charge of organizing the party. I had to decide where to have it and what to do. Since Jane was the guest of honor, it wouldn't mean much if she didn't enjoy it. As I pondered what would make Jane happy, I found myself thinking about what kind of welcome party Emily would have liked for herself. Usually, thinking about Emily made me feel gloomy, but this time it was like planning a fun trip. However, this was Jane's welcome party. I couldn't keep thinking about Emily forever. No, this isn't about Emily. It's Jane's party. I had to remind myself. I forced myself to stop thinking about Emily and planned a party for Jane. I casually asked Jane about her favorite food and learned she liked pizza, so I chose an Italian restaurant known for its gourmet wood-fired pizza. Additionally, I rented a private dining room for the banquet and decided to organize a bingo game. I hoped that through the game, Jane and everyone at work would get to know each other better. On the day of the party, after work, we all headed to the restaurant and the party began. Once it started, the party was a great success. 
There was already good camaraderie among the employees, and many people enjoyed socializing, so everyone seemed to be having a good time. Jane was happily eating pizza and chatting with others. Midway through, I started a planned bingo game. The bingo game turned out to be a big hit, and Jane unexpectedly won the first prize. Her happy face was quite memorable. After the bingo game, Jane continued to be the center of attention, mingling with various people. Though the preparation was stressful, seeing Jane enjoy herself made it all worthwhile. The alcohol also lifted my spirits, and I found myself laughing out loud for the first time in a while. As closing time approached, we decided to wrap up the party, which ended on a very positive note. I paid the bill with the money collected from everyone and left the restaurant. All the other colleagues had already left. As I was hurrying to cash my train, I heard a woman scream, somebody, help. Looking over, I saw Jane being grabbed by an unknown man. Stop it. Jane was desperately trying to shake him off, but the man wouldn't let go of her. I immediately ran towards Jane. Stop it. The man glared at me menacingly. Who are you? I spotted this lady first, so she's mine. His face turned red. Clearly drunk, his speech was slurred. She clearly doesn't want this. Please let her go. I said as I grabbed the man's right arm to pull him away from Jane. His anger intensified at my intervention. Shut up. Mind your own business. He swung his left fist at me. I managed to catch his punch just in time. This is an assault. I'm calling the police. I firmly stated, pulling out my phone from the pocket. Realizing the seriousness of the situation, the man finally backed off with a parting insult and fled. Are you okay? I asked Jane, who looked worried. I'm fine. Are you okay, Jason? You just caught a punch with your bare hands. Are you hurt? I'm fine. He was very drunk, so there wasn't much force behind the punch itself. I showed her my palm to reassure her that I was all right. It wasn't that painful, to be honest. Jane looked relieved, nodded in gratitude, and thanked me. I'm glad you're not hurt. Thank you for saving me. It was nothing, really. Helping others in trouble is just common sense. I replied with a smile. Are you going to the train station, Jane? I'm also heading that way, so if you like, I can accompany you. This area is a bit dark and could be unsafe, and you might need someone to protect you if something like that happens again. Thank you, I'd appreciate that. Jane smiled. Her smiling face reminded me so much of Emily. As we walked and made small talk, I decided to finally ask Jane about Emily. I have been curious for some time, but it didn't seem right to ask at work. It would be best to talk about it when we were alone, but such opportunities were rare. If I missed this chance, I might have never gotten the opportunity to ask again. Jane, there's something I'd like to ask you. I began, showing her a photo of Emily on my phone. Do you know this woman by any chance? I've been curious as you look a lot like her. Jane's expression changed from shock to tears. What's wrong? I asked, concerned. I panicked. Did I ask her something inappropriate? We walked to the nearby park and sat on the bench. When Jane calmed down, I asked her again. Is the woman in the photo someone you knew? She's my wife. Jane nodded. Yes, she's my long lost sister, she replied. Now it was my turn to be surprised. I was amazed by this coincidence. Really? Is that true? Yes, it is. We are half sisters. We had the same mother, but different fathers. We were separated when we were young and have been out of touch ever since. Jane explained. I see. Just as I was about to say that I had never heard about Emily having a sister, a certain memory suddenly came back to me. Once, while having dinner at home, Emily mentioned having a sister she hadn't seen for a long time. I asked her, don't you want to see your sister? Emily replied, 
I do, but as long as she's happy, that's enough for me. That's what makes me happy too. It was very typical of Emily to wish for others' happiness. When I shared this story with Jane, she smiled warmly. She sounds like a kind person. Being married to a reliable man like you, she must be very happy. I replied somewhat awkwardly. Actually, my wife passed away in a traffic accident. That's the reason for my demeanor at work. Tears welled up in Jane's eyes again. I wish I could have seen her while she was still alive. I was just moved to tears by what she said. But now that you and I have met, Emily must be smiling down from heaven. Yes, I vaguely remember she was always a cheerful child. I'm sure she's still smiling no matter where she is. Oh, Jane suddenly had an idea. Do you mind if I come to your house and see where my sister called home? I readily agreed. Of course, that would be great. Emily would be happy, I responded. We got up from the bench and went directly to my house. After showing around the house to Jane, I shared my memories of Emily with her, as she wanted to know what her sister was like. When I began talking, I realized how much I wanted to share the stories with Jane. I started with how Emily and I met, her cooking skills, her love for cycling, and her kindness at all times. Jane listened intently, and before we knew it, morning had arrived. Thank you for today. You really love my sister, didn't you, Jason? I'm sure she was happy to be your wife. Jane said, smiling as she left. After she left, I couldn't help but cry. From then on, Jane visited my house frequently. Not only did we talk about Emily, but also our jobs, interests, passions. Having someone to talk to at home, I gradually regained my energy. I used to be lost in thought alone, but talking with Jane made me smile. I enjoy being with you. I can help but smile, I said. It's great to see you getting your energy back, Jason. I'm sure Emily would want to see you smiling. Jane replied. Hearing her words, I decided to stop feeling sorry for myself. Our interactions continued. Jane, so much like Emily, said she liked to exercise on her days off. I pulled out my dusty bicycle from storage and invited Jane for a ride. It was tiring as I hadn't exercised properly in a while, but I enjoyed riding my bicycle and feeling the wind. More than anything, Exploring various places with Jane was unexpectedly fun. I gradually became attracted to her. When I gathered the courage to tell her my feelings, she said she felt the same way. Since the time I saved her from the drunkard, she had started seeing me as more than just a colleague. After dating for a while, I finally proposed to her. The location was a scenic observatory with a beautiful night view. This was a place that Jane really liked. Will you marry me? When I presented the ring, Jane accepted it. Of course, I will. Thank you, she said. Thus, we became engaged. And we went to share the news with Emily at the cemetery. It was a sunny day, warm with sunshine. Emily, Jane and I are getting married, I told her. We will be happy together. So please watch over us from heaven. We both stood at Emily's grave and quietly spoke to her. I felt as if I heard Emily's voice saying, congratulations on your marriage. And I replied in my mind, thank you. Imagining our future life together, Jane and I left the cemetery 